Chapter 11 International Trade You have already studied about the various aspects of international trade in the book Fundamentals of Human Geography International trade is mutually beneficial as no country is self sufficient India's international trade has undergone a sea change in recent years in terms of volume composition as well as direction although India's contribution in the world trade is as low as 1% of the total volume yet it plays a significant role in the world economy. Let us examine the changing pattern of India's international trade. In 1950-51 India's external trade was worth rupees 12140 million which rose to rupees 8371330 million in 2004-2005 can you calculate the percentage growth in 2004-2005 over 1950-1951 there are numerous reasons for the sharp rise in overseas trade such as the momentum picked up by the manufacturing sectors the liberal policies of the government and the diversification of markets the nature of india's foreign trade has changed over the years table 11.1 though there has been an increase in the total volume of import and export the value of import continued to be higher than that of exports there has also been an increase in trade deficit over the last couple of years this increase in deficit is attributed to the price rise of crude petroleum which forms a major component of india's import list as has already been mentioned the composition of commodities in india's international trade has been undergoing a change over the years the share of agriculture and allied products has declined whereas shares of petroleum and crude products and other commodities have increased the shares of ore minerals and manufactured goods have largely remained constant over the years from 1997 to 98 to 2003 to 2004 the increase in the share of petroleum products is due to a rise in petroleum prices as well as increase in india's refining capacity the decline in traditional items is largely due to the tough international competition amongst the agricultural products there is a great decline in the exports of traditional items such as coffee spices tea pulses etc though an increase has been registered in floricultural products fresh fruits marine products and sugar etc manufacturing sector alone accounted for 75.96% of india's total value of export in 2003-2004 engineering goods have shown a significant growth in the export list textile sector could not achieve much in spite of the liberal measures taken by the government China and other East Asian countries are our major competitors. Gems and jewelry contribute a larger share of India's foreign trade. Changing patterns of the composition of India's import. India faced serious food shortage during 1950s and 1960s. The major item of import at that time was food grain capital goods machinery and equipments the balance of payment was adverse as imports were more than export in spite of all the efforts of import substitution after 1970s food grain import was discontinued due to the success of green revolution but the energy crisis of 1973 pushed the prices of petroleum and import budget was also pushed up Food grain import was replaced by fertilizers and petroleum machine and equipment special steel edible oil and chemicals largely make the import basket examine the changing pattern of imports in table 11.4 and try to comprehend the shifts table 11.4 shows that there is a steep rise in imports of petroleum products it is used not only as a fuel but also as an industrial raw material it indicates the tempo of rising industrialization and better standard of living sporadic price rise in the international market 
is another reason for the same. Import of capital goods maintained a steady increase due to rising demand in the export-oriented industrial and domestic sectors. Non-electrical machinery, transport equipment, manufacturers of metal and machine tools were the main items of capital goods. Import of food and allied products declined with the fall in imports of edible oils. Other major items of India's import include pearls and semi-precious stones, gold and silver, metalliferous ores and metal scrape, non-ferrous metals, electronic goods, etc. The details of Indian imports of principal commodities during 2004-2005 have been given in Table 11.5. Direction of Trade India has trade relations with most of the countries and major trading blocks of the world. Region-wise and sub-region-wise, trade during the period 2004-2005 has been given in Table 11.6. India aims to double its shares in the international trade within the next five years. It has already started adopting suitable measures such as import liberalization, reduction in import duties, delicensing, and change from process to product patents. Asia and Oceania accounted for 47.41% of India's export, followed by West Europe 23.80% and America 20.42%. Similarly, India's imports were highest from Asia and Oceania. 35.40% followed by West Europe 22.60% and America 8.36% in 2004 to 2005 the USA is India's largest trading partner and the most important destination of India's export other countries in order of significance include the UK Belgium Germany Japan Switzerland Hong Kong the UAE China, Singapore and Malaysia. Most of India's foreign trade is carried through sea and air routes. However, a small portion is also carried through land route to neighboring countries like Nepal, Bhutan, Bangladesh and Pakistan. Sea ports as gateways of international trade. India is surrounded by sea from three sides and is bestowed with a long coastline. Water provides a smooth surface for very cheap transport, provided there is no turbulence. India has a long tradition of seafaring and developed many ports with a place name suffix with Patan meaning port. An interesting fact about ports in India is that its west coast has more seaports than its east coast. Though ports have been in use since ancient times, the emergence of ports as gateways of international trade became important after the coming of the European traders and colonization of the country by the British. This led to the variation in the size and quality of ports. There are some ports which have very vast area of influence and some have limited area of influence. At present, India has 12 major ports and 185 minor or intermediate ports. In case of the major ports, Central government decides the policy and plays regulatory function. The minor ports are there whose policy and functions are regulated by state governments. The major ports handle larger share of total traffic. The 12 major ports handle about 75% of the country's oceanic traffic. The British use the ports as suction points on the resources from their hinterlands. The extension of railways towards the interior facilitated the linking of the local markets to regional markets, regional markets to national markets and national markets to the international markets. This trend continued till 1947. It was expected that the country's independence will reverse the process, but the partition of the country snatched away two very important ports, that is Karachi port went to Pakistan and Chittagong port to the erstwhile East Pakistan and now Bangladesh. To compensate the losses, many new ports like the Kandla in the west and the Diamond Harbour near Kolkata on River Hooghly in the east were developed. Despite this major setback, Indian ports continued to grow after the independence.
Today, Indian ports are handling large volumes of domestic as well as overseas trade. Most of the ports are equipped with modern infrastructure. Previously, the development and modernization was the responsibility of the government agencies. But considering the increase in function and need to bring these ports at par with the international ports, private entrepreneurs have been invited for the modernization of ports in India. The capacity of Indian ports increased from 20 million tons of cargo handling in 1951 to more than 500 million tons at present. Some of the Indian ports along with their hinterlands are as follows. Kandala Port, situated at the head of Gulf of Kutch, has been developed as a major port to cater to the needs of western and northwestern parts of the country and also to reduce the pressure at Mumbai Port. The port is especially designed to receive large quantities of petroleum and petroleum products and fertilizer. The offshore terminal at Vadinar has been developed to reduce the pressure at Kandala port. Demarcation of the boundary of the hinterland would be difficult as it is not fixed over space. In most of the cases, hinterland of one port may overlap with that of the other. Mumbai is a natural harbour and the biggest port of the country. The port is situated closer to the general routes from the countries of Middle East, Mediterranean countries, North Africa, North America and Europe where the major share of countries overseas trade is carried out. The port is 20 km long and 6 to 10 km wide with 54 berths and has the country's largest oil terminal. MP, Maharashtra, Gujarat, UP and parts of Rajasthan constitute the main hinterlands of Mumbai ports. Jawaharlal Nehru port at Navasheva was developed as a satellite port to relieve the pressure at the Mumbai port. It is the largest container port in India. Marmago port, situated at the entrance of the Zuari estuary, is a natural harbour in Goa. It gained significance after its remodeling in 1961 to handle iron ore exports to Japan. Construction of Konkan Railway has considerably extended the hinterland of this port. Karnataka, Goa, Southern Maharashtra constitute its hinterland. New Mangalore port is located in the state of Karnataka and caters to the need of the export of iron ore and iron concentrates. It also handles fertilizers, petroleum products, edible oil, coffee, tea, wood pulp, yarn, granite stone, molasses, etc. Karnataka is the major hinterland for this port. Kochi port, situated at the head of Vimbanath Kayal, popularly known as the Queen of the Arabian Sea, is also a natural harbour. This port has an advantageous location being close to the Swiss Colombo road, route. It caters to the needs of Kerala, southern Karnataka and southwestern Tamil Nadu. Kolkata port is located on the Hubli River, 128 km inland from the Bay of Bengal. Like the Mumbai port, this port was also developed by the British. Kolkata had the initial advantage of being the capital of British India. The port has lost its significance considerably on account of the diversion of exports to the other ports such as Vishakapatnam, Paradwip and its satellite port Haldia. Kolkata port is also confronted with the problem of silt accumulation in the Hooghly River which provides a link to the sea. Its hinterland covers UP, Bihar, Jharkhand, West Bengal, Sikkim and the northeastern states. Apart from this, it also extends port facilities to our neighboring landlocked countries such as Nepal and Bhutan. Haldia port is located 105 km downstream from Kolkata. It has been constructed to reduce the congestion at Kolkata port. It handles bulk cargo like iron ore, coal, petroleum, petroleum products and fertilizers, jute, jute products, cotton and cotton yarn etc. Paradwe port is situated in the Mahanadi Delta about 100 km from Katak. It has the deepest harbour specially suited to handle very large vessels. It has been developed mainly to handle large-scale export of iron ore. Odisha, Chhattisgarh and Jharkhand are the parts of its hinterland. Vishakapatnam port in Andhra Pradesh is a landlocked harbour connected to the sea by a channel cut through solid rock and sand.
an outer harbor has been developed for handling iron ore, petroleum and general cargo. Andhra Pradesh is the main hinterland for this port. Chennai port is one of the oldest ports on the eastern coast. It is an artificial harbor built in 1859. It is not much suitable for large ships because of the shallow waters near the coast. Tamil Nadu and Pondicherry are its hinterland. Ennore, a newly developed port in Tamil Nadu has been constructed 25 km north of Chennai to relieve the pressure at Chennai port. Tutikorin port was also developed to relieve the pressure of Chennai port. It deals with a variety of cargo including coal, salt, food grains, edible oils, sugar, chemicals and petroleum products. Airports Air transport plays an important role in the international trade. It has the advantage of taking the least time for carriage and handling high value or perishable goods over long distances. It is very costly and unsuitable for carrying heavy and bulky commodities. This ultimately reduces the participation of this sector in the international trade as compared to the oceanic routes. At present, there are 12 international airports and 112 domestic airports functioning in the country. They are Ahmedabad, Amritsar, Bangalore, Chennai, Delhi, Goa, Guwahati, Hyderabad, Kochi, Kolkata, Mumbai and Thiruvananthapuram. You have already studied about the air transport in the previous chapter. You consult the chapter on transport to find out the main features of air transport in India.